Hey there, CPO here, and in this video, I'm installing these HID headlights from HIDprojectors.com. So if you haven't seen the first video I did sort of going over the actual product, go check that out so you know what I'm working with. But this video, I'm installing the headlights. I'm not gonna worry about wiring up the halos in this video right now, it's just get those HID lights working. So you'll see I've disconnected all the harness wires for the halos and the angel eyes and the devil eyes. Uh, and we're gonna focus strictly with side one of this instruction sheet, which is basically installing the headlights. And then side two will be a later video and that's when all the fun stuff happens. Uh, and then I'm gonna be taking out these LED headlights and I'm hoping I'll have a chance to show you the difference between the two. So I'm gonna install the passenger side HID light first. I'm gonna see if I can leave in the driver's side LED light. We'll see if that works. But uh, if it does, I'll show you the difference. All right, the first thing we need to do is remove this front grill. And across the top are these little plastic uh, sort of rivets that have a centerpiece that you have to pop up with a flathead screwdriver and then you can bring the whole piece out just like that. So the hardest part about these is not losing them once you get them out. And it never fails. I will always try and lose one of these. So uh, do yourself a favor and stick them someplace safe after you get them out. So there's four across the top and then on each side is one more. Just be careful not to scratch your finish when you hit these corner ones. All right, that's gonna free the top. Now, before we pull the grill off, we need to disconnect these uh, front turn signals. It's just on the uh, front of the grill. It's kind of easy for me because I don't have a fender uh, liner right here. But underneath here is a little red tab that you click out and that will allow you to free it. And on the passenger side, that little red tab is gonna be on the top and not the bottom just because everything's reversed. All right, once you've done that, we'll be able to pull our grill apart. And basically there's these clips on each side and then down along the bottom. Now I have a winch that's almost in the way, but not quite. I'm able to work around it with practice. And there we go. And just to show you, it's these clips that we're dealing with. So, all right. And to remove your existing headlight, this is a T15. And there are four tabs here that you're gonna unscrew. Doesn't matter if you're removing your factory lights or if you have an aftermarket light already installed like I do. Okay, so this outer ring is gonna come off and that's all that's holding this light in place. That's my factory headlight plug right there. All right, so now I'm gonna lay out my harness that is going on the battery side, the passenger side. This is gonna connect straight to the battery. And then we've got ground connection, a couple of ground connections here. And uh, yeah, so, and then this is gonna run to the far side. So what I think I'm gonna do first is go ahead, slip this through. I like to run these at the front of the grill and then follow this wiring harness that runs across the top right here. So go ahead and get that started. All right, so this is gonna plug into the new headlight. This one is gonna plug into our stock wiring harness, which is gonna require this adapter. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. And then what I like to do is tape these up and sort of seal them uh, as best I can, all of these connections, because um, I get a lot of 
crud down in here. So I use a combination of um, 3M black electrical tape, um, some decent uh, tape, not Harbor Freight tape. And then I also have a, uh, a product that's designed just to wrap wires. It's heat and sort of weather resistant. So uh, I'll show you that here in a sec too. This isn't really a required step. It just always makes me feel better. Keep as much gunk out of there as I can. And also, because you've got all these different connectors, keeps them from accidentally coming unplugged somehow. So this is a Tessa, what is it, 51036 uh, loom tape. This is actually what OEM manufacturers use to wrap wiring looms in vehicles. So I'm gonna use this. It's got some abrasion resistance, heat resistance, water, oil. So of course, instead of electrical tape, you can use like a dielectric grease or a, a connector protector sort of a product. Um, I just like to tape these up uh, just because it's easy and uh, yeah, it seems to work pretty well. But the goal is to reduce as much moisture infiltration uh, as you can. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, even the factory plugs weren't taped, so. All right, so there we go. That's all taped up and ready to go. Now again, this is gonna go into the factory headlight plug. So I push it up from the front and then what we want to do is make sure it clicks into place. And sometimes that's harder than it should be. If it doesn't click, you can shave a little bit off of this little thing right here. Um, sometimes that's necessary. I've had to do that on several of my light installs. Ugh. Notice more of a shave than a cut. There we go. And that was just enough to get it to lock into place. Now I'm gonna hit the uh, little red safety tab. I'm gonna push this through the front and then tape that connection up as well. Just because I think it's easier to get to from the front. All right. Now I can safely tuck away to give you room to put your light up. All right, let's see what we got here. So we have this that's gonna plug into our ballast. Let's go ahead and do that now. So notice that's a waterproof uh, connector. So I'm not gonna tape that one. We're gonna have to figure out where to mount our ballast, where to attach a ground, or two, and where to put our relay. And then of course, so this is still gonna run back to the battery. Now I have a dual battery setup but you just need to tap into your existing battery circuit. However, that makes sense for your particular situation. So let me get all these wires done and uh, I'll catch you up here in a sec. All right, so I went ahead and added on the uh, harness for the devil eye just because it's such a short little wire here. And then I'm gonna tape that connection with this uh, wire loom tape. All right, and a little tip, if you're gonna set this down on something, you don't wanna scratch this up. So I've been using like a roll of tape or something to set it on top of just to keep it from setting on the bumper. So keep that in mind as you're working. Uh, try and keep from scratching up that front surface. So when you slide this in, there is a side that says up, uh, conveniently labeled. All right, so now what I'm doing is feeding through my plugs for the actual HID light. Get those plugged in. 
So basically now everything is plugged in. I don't have everything installed on the back side, but it's all plugged in. So when I shove all these wires through from the front, I know that I've got room and I don't have to pull the light back out again. So the ring's gonna fit fairly snug on the light itself. And then we're just going to start these screws and then lightly fasten them in because we're gonna probably adjust this light um, later on. We're gonna rotate it. All right, so all my LED harness wires are coming out here. I have the, uh, in this case, this is the devil eye and then the three halos, the one outer halo and the two angel eyes are coming out right there. So like I said, I'm not going to uh, mess with that for this part of the install, but what we do need to do is get everything sort of staged and in place. All right, so have all the wiring done and let me show you where I put things. In this case, uh, 3M double stick tape is your friend. Um, I stuck this to the side of the fuse box area. Also the CAN bus uh, anti-flicker is there. The relay is double stick taped to the side of the fender. The other little control box is uh, stuck right there. So everything is stuck uh, with this 3M double stick tape to get it sort of out of the way. And for ground, I use this uh, grounding post right here. Again, these are the um, halo, angel eyes, and devil eyes um, that haven't been connected yet, but everything is there ready to um, access. And let's see, my battery uh, is running through here. And then of course I have this uh, fancy deal from Genesis Off-Road. So this is where my headlight uh, battery connection is going. So what's gonna happen is you turn on your headlights, the Jeep is gonna feed power through the headlight circuit, which we have fed into this relay. This relay is going to trigger the HID system, pulling power from the battery and pushing it to your headlight through the ballast, of course. So anyway, let's, uh, let's fire it up. All right, guys, so here's the difference between the HID and the LED. Can you see it? Oh, I should probably turn on the headlights, huh? So first of all, look at that cutoff on the HID versus the pattern of the LED. Now the LED has a defined hotspot, uh, but definitely not as sharp as the cutoff on that uh, HID light. Keep in mind, these are not adjusted the same yet, so. All right, so before I finish this install, I do wanna show you, I have access to this thermal imaging uh, scanner, and I wanna show you the heat output of the lights. So that's the uh, LED. 48, 51, 53, now the HID light. 83, 86. So this is a problem people have a lot with LEDs is they don't heat up, so they don't melt snow and ice. But you can clearly tell, even just in the thermal scan, how those HIDs heat up nicely. So just something to consider. If, uh, if you live in an area with snow and ice, look, we hit somewhere in there, we hit a 90 degrees, right? That's going to heat up and that's going to melt ice. So, and that's not. Before we tighten down that light, I do need to straighten out that beam pattern. It's tilted a little bit crooked. Uh, it's tilted down on the passenger side a little bit, so I'm just going to adjust that by rotating it inside the ring. All right, so basically work to get it straight across, cut off on the garage door panels. Now we can uh, go ahead and install that other one. 
and then I can adjust for the actual beam height for driving. All right, so the passenger side is different only in the fact that we don't need to connect into the passenger side headlight circuit. We're actually gonna just, I'm gonna tape this off uh, to keep it from getting all cruddy. But the light is gonna be powered from this feed that came over from the driver's side. So we're just gonna basically make a ground connection and then um, plug this into, this is the high beam circuit and then our uh, wiring harness uh, for the other light. So let me tape this up, like I said, to protect it from getting cruddy. And I'm just gonna tuck that out of the way somewhere. All right, so just like I did to the other side, I wrapped up and uh, loomed this and taped off the angel eye, devil eye, and halo uh, connectors just to keep them from getting all cruddy. I left my HID connectors and my high beam connector right there. So now what I can do is route that up through there. So now I can pull out this ballast. And just like on the driver's side, all of this stuff is gonna get attached somewhere, probably using double stick tape. I'm gonna make these connections. For the lights. We're feeding my harness through from the passenger side, which basically gives me my high beam connector, which is this guy. And then this is gonna feed up, and then this is gonna connect to there. So I've got these two, they're gonna go to ground. The rest of this stuff's gonna get mounted. Find the top. And this will just go in lightly until I can take it back out and adjust it. All right, so here's a look at the passenger side. Basically, I thought I had more room over here, but I don't, because I have a lot going on. I've got uh, my waterproof uh, fuse relay box. I have my switches for my lockers and uh, you know air compressor. So all this is sort of filled with stuff, um, but I did uh, find some place. This is double stick uh, taped to the uh, frame area. This is double stick tape there. That other box is sort of just uh, pushed down inside that well area. So everything's nice and tidy, should hold well. And uh, yeah, so now whenever I turn on my lights, I get two of them and that's a win in my book. So now what I need to do is do some final adjustments and uh, I'll show you how they look on the road. Oh and I need to uh, tidy up these real quick. Uh -huh.